right, everyone, here we are, our last and final biogeochemical cycle. And those of you paying incredible attention are already noticing that there's not a number in front of this one. Yes, there is not. The reason being is that this is not on the college board's curriculum, but I'm still teaching it to you. Why? Because I want you to understand sulfur. I want you to understand that sulfur is important when we talk about air pollution, when we talk about uh, acid rain, all of that is based off of sulfur and sulfur cycling throughout the uh, ecosystems. So it's something small, short, but I really want you to understand it. I want you to understand that I'm not just teaching you a whole bunch of superfluous information. I'm teaching you things that are actually going to help you fully understand uh, environmental science as a course and content area. So again, no standards associated with it. That's awesome. But let's talk about what is sulfur. Well, sulfur is an element. Okay? Sulfur is a naturally occurring element. All right. And it's yellow in color. Now, this person here is harvesting sulfur in um, Indonesia. There is a very famous volcano where people actually go and harvest sulfur from pretty much an active volcano. It's incredibly putrid smelling, hydrogen sulfide spewing everywhere. Very, very problematic. But uh, sulfur is commonly found bonded in ionically bonded substances through sulfates and sulfites. So understanding that sulfates, sulfites, when you heard, heard about all those different things like sulfuric acid, stuff like that, that is the sulfur we're really talking about in um, this lesson. Now, why am I telling you and teaching you about sulfur um, in the ecosystems? And why did the College Board not really want to include this? Well, I don't think they wanted to include it because it's, they had to draw a line somewhere. You had to draw a line somewhere, but I'm actually really surprised that sulfur did not make the cut. Um, it is not a nutrient used for excessive plant growth, and so I think that's why it kind of got nixed. But it is incredibly important for you know other topics that we're going to talk about later on in the year. So I figured might as well just uh, inform everyone of it right now. How do we release or how do we get sulfur into the atmosphere? Well, it naturally gets in the atmosphere from outgassing from volcanoes. So outgassing from volcanoes, no big deal. That's producing sulfur and the planet kind of regulates and deals with it. Uh, decomposition of living things. Again, you know, different sulfur compounds are inside your body. You use sulfur for different things. So eventually uh, when it decomposes, it'll work its way out. But one of the big ways in which humans are amplifying sulfur in the atmosphere and sulfur in the environment is through the burning of fossil fuels, specifically coal. When you hear about people burning coal, just think it is the worst possible thing you can be doing. And it produces a lot of sulfur that goes right up in the atmosphere. The sulfur then eventually goes up in the atmosphere. It's usually a sulfate. It's going to react with water up in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid. And that sulfuric acid falls to the earth. That sulfuric acid eats away at um, a lot of living things. It can actually lead to the death of many living things. Uh, by altering the pH of the soil, pH of the water that, that they live in. It will decompose a lot of our natural uh, buffers, our acid buffers. So we have a lot of calcium carbonate, especially in this area. We have a lot of limestone, all right? And that limestone helps to regulate. And so we're actually protected from a lot of uh, acid rain in this area. But a lot of old tombstones and statues were made of uh, marble or limestone or compressed Limestone is what you get when you get how to get marble, and it's very susceptible to sulfuric acid, so it's very problematic. Um, and this is something I want you to understand. And now I got this little animation down here showing you um, mud pots. And if anyone's ever been to Yellowstone National Park, you've probably seen these, but you can smell it when you get close. It's um, it's almost like a primordial hydrogen sulfide bubbling pit of disgustingness, but. Um, this is actually one of the theories of where life might have spawned, these ideas of these um, bubbling, nutrient-rich areas, uh, not photosynthetically based, but based off of heat, and then using sulfur to help generate food sources from. So it's an interesting idea, the idea of chemosynthesis and the idea of ways in which organisms have evolved to survive. All right. Now, getting into the sulfur cycle, understanding the sulfur cycle, again, 
pretty simplified. I don't need to do too many drawings here, but understand you have your natural sources of sulfur from volcanoes, but then you also produce sulfites and sulfates that get up into the atmosphere from the burning of fossil fuels, again, specifically coal. Eventually, it's going to, it can go through something called dry deposition, where it'll fall pretty much as a sulfate or as a dry acid, which is a really unique situation. Um, or it usually is more commonly understood as wet deposition, where it's going to fall as an acid precipitation, as in snow, as in rain, as in sleet, whatever. And eventually that can then lead to problems within the organisms and the ecosystems, depending on the concentration of that acid. All right. Eventually we talk about it being cycled through, again, accumulating in bodies of water, settling out, eventually then through millions of years of plate tectonics, moving things, weathering and erosion, you're going to re-expose some sulfur and then other organisms will be able to uptake it again for their health and nutrition. And that is all I've got for you on the sulfur cycle. I told you it was going to be a short little topic to cover, but again, I think it's going to become much more important later on, especially when we talk about acid rain, acid precipitation, coal-fired power plants, and some of the problems associated with it. So I'm glad that I took this time right now to teach you, and I know you are glad that I took this time right now for you to learn all about it. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Send me an email, and if you don't have any questions, well, that's awesome. Great job. I'll see you at the next lesson. We're done the biogeochemical cycle, so no more worries about that. You like that lesson? I know you did. So why don't you go ahead and smash that like button right now. Go ahead and comment. Tell all your friends about how great that lesson was. And make sure you subscribe because I'm going to keep bringing you AP environmental content that you're going to want to watch or do whatever else those other YouTube channels tell you to do. And with that, Maloney, out.